All right, we are cutting the hooks out of an old net um, for this new net we're building. Fishing these nets in the river, you'll have a little bit of warp on these hooks. And putting it into a new net, you want all of them hooks to stay exactly like they were in the old net. And the reason being, if you've got a little bit of warp and one is warped here and the other one's warped here, when you go to sewing it in, you'll have too tight or too slack a mesh in between those hooks. So it's best if you're reusing old hooks to mark those hooks before you cut it out of the old net. And that's what I did right here with this white paint. I just sprayed across all of the hooks in line. So when we sew it in the new one, we'll keep them lined up. I'm gonna show you real quick, if you ever have to do this, this is gonna help some people out. How do you cut these old, uh, this old twine off of these hooks to get the net out. And this is the fastest, easiest way. Um, you could use a soldering iron. A soldering iron would do pretty good. You just put it on there. But this is just an old butter knife. It's actually not an old, it's a new one I stole from Danielle. And we got a torch, um, just a regular propane torch. I'm gonna heat this knife up and I'll show you real quick how we cut these out. I'm wearing welding gloves also, so to make sure the heat don't transfer up and burn my hand. And what I'm gonna do once it's cherry red, I'm gonna put the tip of that knife about halfway down on that hook and literally just slide and push at the same time. I'm just sliding that hot knife right through all of that twine. Probably best to wear some long sleeve shirt doing this. Safety glasses are a must. Um, I've had this that hot tar will splatter back on you. And you'll see in a minute when I get this whole hook cut all the way around it, we will actually just push that webbing right out of there. Y'all find a faster way to do it, let me know. I can tell you for sure with a knife or a box cutter, you'll be there all day trying to get it off. All right, we got the last three right here on this hook. Get them cut, and we'll pop it out. I'll show y'all how that works. It's the fastest way I know to get one out. These got tar on them. I'm getting them all in Danielle's living room. She's gonna probably kill me for that. But um, I'm gonna show you there's a lot more to tying this in than just putting it up there and sewing it on. You gotta space your knotting all right to get it to end out right. So what I did, did some math on this, and you're just gonna use um your diameter, which is 42 inches, I double check, measured, make sure you're gonna multiply that times pi, which is 3.14, and that gives you the circumference. The circumference on this outer hook was just under 132 inches. So then I took 132 inches, divide that by 38, which is the number of mesh that we've got in this hand sewn net, and it comes out to just under three and a half inches. So that tells me that each one of these um, knots needs to be just under three and a half inches all the way around to come out right on this end. I've got my paint here. This paint on this side will be the, the tail end of the net um, because that's the way it come out of the other one. The uh, Lines here, I've got one that I started, I just set this for like a center reference point for me to point my straight edge to. And I've got a little tape measure, I'll come out here and I'm gonna mark three and a half right here. Three and a half is gonna be close enough for what we're doing. And I'm just gonna use this needle for a straight edge. I'm gonna put it on that line point it right to my ball of twine in the middle and mark all my bits. 
And since this is tar, I've just got a piece of chalk, um, marking chalk, to mark this with. So that's where our knots are going to be. And we'll just do this all the way around, around the set of hooks. We'll just keep going with this. Mark again three and a half. And hopefully when we get done, all the way around we'll have 38 marks total. Keep going like this. And I can just go three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, all the way around this thing. As long as we keep good marks on this, we're going to be fine building this net. You can see these are a little bit less than, like those are probably going to be two and a half in there by the time you get to that inner um, hook in there. But that's going to be our, our landing points for, for all of our knots all the way around. Now comes the good part. We get to see something that kind of starts resembling a hoop net now. So what I've done here, I went ahead and hung it up. We got a makeshift uh, rope going through the living room right now. I, I got all this set up in a shop, but I didn't uh, didn't really want to go out there tonight. But I got this rope tied off up there to Danielle's elk and. Um, what I've got here, what I, I, this is the um, tail end hoop, the last hoop, the back of the net. And uh, we'll start, this is the smallest one, we'll start with it. And we already know that our measure, or our mesh number from this hoop to the end is six mesh. So we can just come down six mesh, tie it in, drop another six mesh, Tie the next one in and just keep going. What I did on this first one, just an easy way to do this so this hook is hanging, is I took some just scrap pieces of string and tied the hook loose in three different places so that hoop would sit up there um, on the knot line that we're gonna tie in. All right, to get started, I'm just gonna catch my, my knot line and I'm just gonna come down here Pull that one up to right there. Tie it as tight as I can get it. And I want that knot from that netting right on the inside of that uh, hoop. That's what I'm wanting. And I want my knots out here right out here on the outside so there's no specific way to start this right here but that's got me started and now i can start sewing the hoop in and that's how we're going to sew it in right like that and all I've got to do is pull that line, catch that next knot, pull, and then throw me a hitch right there. Kind of grab that knot, pull it right in against where that white mark is on that hook. And I want to cinch this down tight like so. And a good rule of practice is to get that netting knot on that side so it won't pull back and you can actually see right here I've got a string on that side of that knot and if I want to I can even bring this next one next hitch on the other side of that knot not saying you have to but that keeps that not from walking either way on this hook and just like that that's what it should look like that's perfect and this is just a start here when we come back around this other side we'll tie off to this line here but you can see how i've, I've got a hitch there on both sides of that knot on the inside 
And you don't have to have one on um, both sides on every knot, but it'll it'll help. You can see how that line wants to ride over here, but if I just flip it over a little bit or pull over a little extra on that mesh before I pull that down tight, it'll stay over there on that side. That's it. That's it in a nutshell right there. Just like so. That's tying it in a hook. And we'll just go all around this net just like that. Now this is this this goes fairly fast. It's not a um really slow process here. Once you once you get going with it, it'll go pretty good. And you can just cinch it on down fairly tight there. If it's not tight enough, you can cinch it down a little tighter. Just keep on rolling around. Just about got this one tied in. We'll have six left to go. This one's went pretty good, so I'm expecting that the other six are going to go this good as well. I'm just tying two, two hitches on each one. That's all you need. And there's that tag in that I talked about earlier and um, we're going to use it to tie this out together. Have to use all kind of tricks to get this knot here tight. Hold your thumb on one end, finger on the other. You want to keep that knot as tight as possible. But I'll put three or four hitches right there and it'll 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 hold pretty tight. I'll just double a, or put a knot right there on the back side of it. It'll never come untied. This is this is 18 twine here on the net. This is number 30 twine. So it's nearly twice as big as this line, and it'll take a lot more wear to wear this in too than if you sewed it in with a smaller twine. You can sew it in with a smaller twine, but two or three years rolling around in the river, you're gonna be sewing it back in again. This this line here probably probably lasts several years, um, twice as long as sewing it in with smaller twine would. So just a suggestion on these hooks tying the net in, make sure you use a little bit bigger twine. We're gonna burn these ends. Real quick, we'll be done with that. Always squish it down flat. All right, we got the tail hoop tied in. That's the first one we've tied in. Drop down to the second one. Um, off our calculations on this net, like I said, it's going to be um, from the second throat to the tail, it's going to be six mesh in between each hoop. That's going to make the rear section of the net longer gonna give us a little more room to put the more slanted um, throat in that I like. I like a little longer taper on my throat and this longer net in the rear section is gonna give us that. When we get to that second throat, we'll, from there to the head of the net, we will end up going five and a half between each hook. Um, again, we put about three points on here, we just tied it up to the row of knots that we're gonna go around on. I went ahead and started my knot here. And one thing I did, you'll notice, we got our white paint right there from when we painted this set of hooks when we cut them out. And if you look up here, we got our white paint. So we wanna keep this white paint in line all the way on this net. And this is only in a situation where we have used hooks because like I say these hooks have got a little bit of taper 
because of how we tie our bridles on and the current pushing on those over the years. Um, it is a good practice to about every year or two take those bridles off and rotate them around the net a little ways. I've seen some people tie like a four liter bridle and that I guess that'd work or a three liter bridle. Maybe that puts a little more tension around the circumference of that hoop and it won't bow them. But um, you also gotta remember that we don't jug our net, so we don't get a lot of bow in our hooks. Um, if you jug them, the current's constantly pulling on those jugs and ropes. And if you get trash on them or whatever, you're constantly pulling tension on those hooks. We drop our headline in on a weight. So over time, our rope is down on the bottom and current's not catching it. So really the only um, push we have on our nets is all the way around it equal. We, we're not pulling on that bridle much. So I haven't really seen, even these, I went ahead and lined these up like this in case there was a little bow, but there's really not much bow. You can see them laying on the floor there a while ago and there's not much bow in these hoops at all. Um, I just, as I think of them, I try to give y'all what tips I can to uh, save you some trouble in the long run. You know, just stuff I've learned from experience over the years. Okay, I've finished tying the third hoop in. Show y'all how I do this. Once I get one of these hoops tied on, I always just uh, take me some scrap twine, come up here and tie it to the upper ones. Gives me plenty of room down here below to work, get the next one tied in. Keeps the net up out of my way and all that. It's just the easiest way I find to do it. So, on this one, you can see I've got all my white lines where we spray painted together. I've got one down here on this next one. And I'll make sure that I follow um, this mark just to the left of it, right down to this one. And we'll tie it right there and that's gonna keep everything straight as far as our markings go. Try to keep those knots tight tight as possible you got to be careful here too because you got a lot of threads here you want to make sure that you're getting your needle through both of these meshes here you got the flu and you got the outer mesh so you want to make sure you're going through both sets when you're sewing this area with the throats in Sew it in just like the rest of the net. This is the fourth hook from the tail end. So I have three more after this one. I don't see any reason why we won't get all these hoops tied in tonight. Hopefully we can get started tying the fingers in a little bit, work on that song. If I get all the way done, I'm just having to work on it some in my afternoons when I get off work. So there's one advantage to sewing one by tying one out by hand as far as the mesh and everything is if if you hadn't ever built one before and you want to and you got the time, if you'll build one by hand to start off with, then you'll be real good at tying these knots. Um, and the payoff is when you catch fish in it. So, all right. Getting close to getting done with the hooks. Working on the last one. Looking pretty good so far. Be glad to get this part done. Look a lot like a hoop net when I'm getting done with this. Putting three hitches on each one of these just because it's up in the front. Add a little extra strength. I don't think I would. You ain't got to. Two will work just fine. I'm just probably overdoing it, but it'll it'll hold good. 
really doing that so this line will stay toward the inside and won't, won't uh, pull in, just making a height, tighter hitch. Uh, well, one thing we don't want, we want to make sure of, is when we tie this net in, the net needs to stay on the inside. So when this rolls around, you know, if you cut this while this net's rolling around, the line that you tie it in with, that's fine. You can come back and replace this, but you would never want this netting to get up here on the side or the outside of these hooks because it's rolling around on the bottom of that sand but eating <laughs> up. And you'd, you'd cut your, that's why we tie the netting on the inside of the hooks to protect the netting. Ain't nothing to it, it's just time consuming. Very time consuming. You can see, you can see right here, the way I'm doing these hitches, I'm turning where this, this line is down underneath these hitches. It comes off the bottom of the hitch on both sides. That way this line will lay flat on this hook. And when we dip this, that line will actually you just stick right in place onto that hook. There it is right there. We got it tied in. Looks good. So we're going to get it down, stretch it out, start working on the flues. That's going to be it for this part. Be sure to catch part three. We're going to be tying in the flues and uh, get this thing ready to go in the water. God's Country Hunting Fishing, keeping it real.